This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. pleasant good evening time for startup talk from indian river state college with mr tom kindred thank you sir and welcome to another segment and installment of startup talk the show designed to assist and help treasure and research coast residents who want to start grow or accelerate their business as i always say what a great place it is to own and operate a business along the beautiful research and treasure coast we will spend time during our hour together this evening to highlight and create awareness regarding the very powerful and robust business assistance and support programs that exist right here in our community at our very own Indian River State College. I am Tom Kindred, and I serve as the Regional Director for the Small Business Development Center here at IRSC. Underwriters for this segment of Startup Talk, as always, is the Florida SBDC at IRSC and our good friends at Express Printing of Port St. Lucie. So, Greg, how are you this evening? Doing well. Uh, how are things in uh, Pioneer Sports? I guess we are playing uh, some. There's a big softball game going Lady on. Lady softball tournament uh, is going on as we speak with the IRSC mm -hmm. and their new IRSC Hall of Fame coach. That's right. That's yeah. right. He was inducted into the yeah. Hall of Fame. I, yeah. I read that in my, uh, in my uh, Pioneer Connection newsletter. I yep. did see that. So congratulations once again to the softball team, and uh, good luck this weekend. Yeah. Uh, as always, uh, Greg, I try to bring uh, exciting, um, powerful guests to this show, and tonight uh, is no exception. We have with us our very good friend, uh, Indian River State College Foundation Executive Director, Ann Decker. Ann, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi, I'm happy to be here. I always love to be on your show. Madam President. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And we have with us a, a very good friend. Uh, I consider a, a very good friend and uh, a, a mentor of mine for many, many years. Um, and uh, I... I would my, he admit that? He probably wouldn't. Oh, okay. And I, 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 I may have owed him some money through the years. But uh, our good friend, Mr. Mike Brown, welcome to the show, Mr. Brown. Thanks, Tom. I'm glad to be here. And, uh, and if, if, I, if I get any credit for being a mentor of yours, I'm proud of it. Well, that's good. That's good. I appreciate that. Um, uh, we have uh, Mr. Brown has obviously been very close to our program. Uh, we are the Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute. Uh, we refer to our program as the EDI. And we are uh, housed and headquartered in what is known as the Brown Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, a beautiful high-tech building on main campus, uh, the Y building. Uh, and uh, we, are, we are proud to be housed and, and uh, you know, headquartered right there in the Brown Center. So we, we certainly appreciate the work you did with the college and the collaboration on the building. It's a, it's a beautiful place to, for us to host uh, our entrepreneurship program. Well, I'm glad to, gl glad to have been part of it. Uh, I, I think since the time I got here, I've always been close to the college, and uh, the people that I worked with had a close connection to the college, so it's just it's a logical expansion of that to stay with it. So. Yeah. Well, we, we certainly appreciate the work that you've done with us through the years. And, and I'm looking forward to our conversation tonight. We're going to talk about a very unique program. Uh, that is uh, that is uh, run and produced by our foundation. But before we do that, I want to just spend a couple of minutes and talk about uh, some, of course, exciting things that are coming up for us uh, next week, Tuesday, May the 7th, uh, beginning uh, next week on Monday. It's National Small Business Week uh, across the entire country. And uh, here at the Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute and the Florida Small Business Development Center, we have been celebrating Small Business Week for the last uh, number of years uh, by hosting our annual Entrepreneurship and Small Business Conference. All the activities are held right there on main campus. Uh, we use both the Kite Center and the Brown Center to host all these activities, but got a very big time conference coming up on, on Tuesday. Uh, 
our uh, we've got our regular uh, attendee and presenter at the conference. We've got Dr. Jerry Parrish, the chief economist for the Florida Chamber Foundation. He will be kicking things off Tuesday morning with his review of uh, the Florida economy trends and happenings, and then he'll break that all down for us for the Treasure Coast. So I would encourage folks to. You know, uh, if uh, if you want to hear what's going on in Florida's economy, the, the place to be is Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock at the Kite Center to hear Dr. Jerry Parrish. Following Dr. Parrish, we've got 12 breakout sessions on all kinds of topics, understanding business finances. Uh, government contracting, um, team building, social media marketing, uh, d digitizing the digital transformation of small business. Uh, one of the standout um, uh, uh, breakouts we've got is cybersecurity, and the FBI is going to be on the panel uh, presenting that cybersecurity uh, workshop. Website design, uh, search engine optimization, leadership. So got a got a great lineup of. Um, of workshops then at noon time one of the fbi folks are going to be there uh well i'll let you know that therefore you don't want to be around that's I'm right assuming. yeah that's, <laughs> might be safer that way <laughs> right uh yes and if you see me my name's not tom when you uh tom kindred when you see me with the fbi so um so uh at lunch we've got uh business author and uh small business advocate uh jim blassingame uh, Jim is the author of a number of business books, but he will be presenting on a couple of his um, his books uh, at lunchtime. Uh, so Jim will be our lunchtime keynote speaker. Uh, everyone who attends the conference gets a copy of Jim's book, get a chance to get the book signed by, by the author. Uh, and then immediately following lunch, Jim is going to give a, a full presentation for the entire conference on uh, on his second book. So Jim's going to be very engaged with us uh, throughout the day. So again, very big day on Tuesday, May the 7th, the 7th Annual Entrepreneurship and Small Business Conference brought to you by uh, Indian River State College and the Florida Small Business Development Center at and IRSC. You know, Jim has been a very successful uh, business talk show host for yeah. oh boy it's got to be almost four decades now. yes it was uh it was a little uh it was a little strange for me but i was a guest on his show and and he was asking all the questions i i i didn't know how to i didn't really know how to handle know. that that's right i was answering his questions with questions so uh i also want to just uh, note too we've got a, an incredible uh very unique uh partnership that we have formed uh the florida sbdc at irsc is partnering with uh, indian river magazine and its publisher and and uh, Greg Inns and we have put together a business publication that we are piloting and we are launching across the Treasure Coast. I think with I think with all that's going on in terms of business uh, along the Treasure Coast, I think we deserve a business publication uh, to kind of tell our story. So we are launching this publication. Um, we will have the first issue published uh, at the end of June. So, um, again, we want to make sure that everybody knows what's going on with the magazine and gets a chance to, uh, to potentially p uh, purchase some ad space in the magazine uh, because it's really going to be, uh, it's gonna be a, a very good publication and a high-quality publication. If, you've, if you're familiar at all with any River Magazine, uh, you'll know that it's going to be a, awesome. a, a nice-looking, yeah. uh, high-quality publication. Um, uh, a couple, couple of the first stories that have been written are about the manufacturing uh, industry along our community. They're, they've been written by uh, Reuters, um, business writers. So got great writing, great journalism. Uh, it's going to be a good-looking publication and, um, so, and, and certainly well-deserved around the Treasure Coast to, to kind of uh, highlight and promote what's going on in terms of uh, economic development and business. And our startup talk has the uh, front cover. A absolutely and you and i i think are on the cover yes i think oh that's, that's a scary sure. thought <laughs> <laughs> i won't be on the cover of much more uh i as we always as we always the old joke uh, yes i'm i'm perfectly suited for radio so um so anyway that's we got all kinds of things going on next week uh got a great conference going to happen on tuesday uh, i encourage everyone to to come out and participate you know i'd like to tell the story <clears throat> that um, I spent a long time in private enterprise, and and um, and it was only after I got to the college and and uh, got to meet uh, some very uh, wise and savvy business people that I learned a a, a little concept uh, about business and 
I've, I've always appreciated this, but, you know, for, for many people, obviously, you know, we've got to spend a lot of time as business owners working uh, in the business. But when I got to the college and I began to, to talk to others, I understood that you've also got to take a little time out to work on the business. And that's probably something I didn't do as well as I should have when I was in business. Uh, so this really, I always try to tell people, and I'm always impressed with those folks that come out and participate in events like the conference, that this is really time to work on the business. You know, set the phone aside for a little while, come network with other business people, see what's going on in the marketplace, uh, take a workshop. Uh, you never know what kind of ideas or, or you know, get, get yourself re-energized about the business, but, but that's what the conference is all about. So I encourage folks to come out and take advantage of what's going on next week at the college. So with that, I want to turn back to our guests this evening because this, uh, when, when we talk entrepreneurship and we talk business, you, 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 can't, you can't have that conversation without talking to, to, uh, to Ann Decker because uh, an awful lot going on at the Indian River State College Foundation. So Ann, again, welcome to the show. Thank you. So start us real quickly with a little background on, uh, on you, kind of your pathway uh, to your current position as uh, Foundation Executive Director. Well, I had a long and uh, very successful career working uh, in the United States House of Representatives, but always worked from the district. And uh, when that career was coming to an end, uh, Dr. Massey reached out to me and asked me if I would have any interest in running the Indian River State College Foundation office. And I am flattered and honored to say it has now been 12 years. And one of my favorite parts <laughs> of my job is the annual event that we host called the Entrepreneur of the Year event, which is now just celebrated its 20th anniversary when we honored uh, the gentleman is, who is here to my right, Mike Brown. And we honored him on March the 7th. And hopefully uh, we surprised him with a few things about the history of his life and honored his business success with Harbor Federal and Harbor Community Banks. Yeah. Well, and, and bef before we get into it, I want to talk about the Entrepreneur of the, the Year event. But tell us just a little bit about the role and the mission of the foundation at the college. What well, the role of the foundation is, of course, to support the college in any way that the college needs it. But our primary mission is, of course, to provide scholarships for students who are in need. In the last academic year, we provided $3.3 million and assisted over wow. 3,000 students. Now, wow, it has amazing. nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the support from the community and businesses uh, that generously donate to help students. We have very few students. We only have 14% of our students that even borrow any money at all because we try to get them out of college without any student debt, and we work very hard at that. Wow. Also, you mentioned the Brown Center. The Brown Center was an effort of the foundation in which we raise funds to supplement the technology and all of the stuff that is in that building of where the Small Business Development Center and the Entrepreneur Development Institute is housed. It is the foundation's responsibility to add to the state funds uh, that Dr. Massey is able to secure so that we can have the state-of-the-art facilities, not only for our students, but for our faculty and our community. Yeah, uh, so I have other programs, probably too long to get into, but uh, that's two of my very, very primary things that I do. You've nice. got till midnight, so okay. go ahead. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So so now let's let's just uh, let's talk a little bit about this Entrepreneur of the Year program. Tell us a little bit about the event. Uh, you know, what what's it all about? Why are we engaged in it? Uh, more than 20 years ago, we had a gentleman from Vero Beach who came to Dr. Massey and said, there's not enough attention that is garnered towards those individuals who get up every day and go to work and produce small businesses or grow businesses for this area and they are not recognized and I would like to partner with you in a way that you will recognize and reward those individuals who are in our community who are doing that very thing. So I will just tell you it has been an evolution over 20 years. Uh, I think I'll let Mike speak to it but our our goal is to, to tell the story of that businessman's life from where he started, his background, his family, how he grew a business, started a business, took over a business, changed the business, survived hardships, and the grit and determination. If there is one thing that I have learned from the 12 entrepreneurs that certainly we have honored during my tenure is that failure 
is not something to be ashamed of. Failure is part of the process. They consider failure a learning process. We had an entrepreneur that told me, why do you want to honor me as an entrepreneur? Uh, I think you ought to honor me, uh, honor me for the failures. I hang my failures up on the wall so that I will never make that mistake again because it is the failures that have prompted me and propelled me to success. And I will mm. never forget that. Every entrepreneur. It's really that, interesting. Yes. Yeah. Every entrepreneur that I have been working with in this Entrepreneur of the Year has had failures and setbacks and strife. And I don't think I'm going to make it. And okay. And maybe they don't. They just pick up their shoes, they pick up an idea, and they just move to the next thing. And it mm. is a true inspiration because I think we're all challenged. We all have challenges in our lives, and we think if failure, we think, oh, we can't go on, or we're a terrible person, or we can't make it. No. It's a learning curve. It's part of life. Right. And just have grit and determination to keep going. Uh, how long has he been going on? I think you had a you kind of celebrated a milestone yes, this year. Yes, we just with Mr. celebrated. Brown. Uh, we celebrated our twentieth anniversary. Uh, Mike Brown was our twentieth entrepreneur that we have honored, and um, it has certainly uh, it's a signature event, and it is the single most important thing that the foundation does all year long. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Brown, uh, let's turn to you uh, for a moment and, and talk a little bit about, um, you know, your background and, and what's been going on with you. Kind of kind of start us off with a little bit of your background. I, I had the pleasure and the honor to kind of hear a little bit of your story that night. Um, you know, in, in, in our uh, relationship through the years, I've always known you uh, as a banker here in, in Fort Pierce and, uh, and the Treasure Coast. But, but uh, you have a, a, you know, a history of your own that, that brought you to this community. Kind of give us a little bit of your background and your pathway here to, to the Treasure Coast. Well, I grew up in the Midwest and um, did get a degree in finance. And early on, in, in college at least, I felt I wanted to get into banking, finance, what a variety of different choices in that area, but I, th I thought that's something I wanted to do, and I enjoyed that. I, I liked math, and somehow I thought I would enjoy that as a career. Um, it took me, my first two jobs were close to it, but not quite there. My th three years out of school, then I had a chance to get into banking, and uh, it came from, just as a reference, from somebody I had worked with. And um, I got into banking in uh, 1964, and I've been in it ever since. Now, where'd you go to college? I went to St. Louis University in the Midwest, oh, yeah. in St. Louis. And the Billikens. Uh, the, you're right, the, the, yes. the Billikens. Not many people would know that. <laughs> I've actually done games there. <laughs> not, a, yes. not many people would know that. But, uh, but so I've, been, I've had the good fortune, and, and I think it's, it's, it's important, but I've, I've always liked what I've done. And so I've had the good fortune of being in banking most of my life. I spent, uh, I left St. Louis in 1972 just to reach out for an opportunity and got to Florida and ended up in Fort Pierce in 1974 and I've been here ever since and wow. loved every minute of it yeah. and I you know you talk about uh, failures you describe failures well if you're in banking <laughs> you are subject to two things that can go wrong one your own stupidity which is <laughs> with which all of us have some of that but you also are tied to national economic cycles and, and regardless of how smart you are! If the ec the economy is 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 in the tank, you're going to be str you're going to struggle with that. Um, we we had another word for them instead of failures. We called them near death experiences. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, so it was uh. it was a, maybe a nicer word for it. But uh, you know, certainly during uh, the crisis, the late in, in the late seventies and in the in the eighties, you know, we certainly saw you know. Florida and, and we, we saw a lot of challenges, and Florida, for example, is has always been during that time a high growth state. But what comes with that is sort of the rebound a little bit when there's a correction. The areas that have been growing so fast correct the most. Right. So in some of those national downturns, California, Texas, and Florida were some of the ones that had the biggest. Uh, reaction in Georgia more than the most right. recent time and just because those are the fast growing states yeah. the uh, you know if you're in Iowa you don't get the growth that we get so 
when it slows down, it's not as dramatic. So we, right. we've had a lot of challenges here, and I loved every minute of it. Our right. old station in Los Angeles uh, did a story last night that California, this is the lowest number, growth number in California since 1900. People are leaving in droves. So wow. High taxes. Yeah. Uh, Pro- you know, property uh, values on high taxes. Yeah. 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 Oh, over the again, you know, over the span of your career, you know, obviously banking's changed, and and how the services banks provide or delivered. I mean, talk a little bit about how banking differs. I mean, you you got into it in, uh, you know, in the '60s, and and you know, you long career in banking. How are things different from when you began your career? Well, in what banking? I've, it's actually actually there's probably two things. One you might not think of, but uh, when I first started, um, bankers would sit in their offices and largely wait for somebody to come to them. Now you'd advertise and you'd hope they'd come in the door, but the idea of, if certainly even on the deposit side, to go out and knock on somebody's door and say, we want your business, that was foreign. And then of course, as in, the, in the 70s and all, there's more competition. There's new, new banks are starting up and people are being aggressive as they should be. And now you're, instead of, instead of people handling just the clerical work, you need salespeople. And, uh, you know, so you've got to be able to sell your product. So actually that, that was one of the most dramatic changes. I mean, from, wow. the, yeah. from the time that, you know, the, the Bailey building alone from the right. wonderful life was out there, you would sit there and wait for somebody to bring you some money and you'd say thank you and you'd manage it well. And now it's a very competitive world, and you've got to right. get out and ask for the business. The second big thing, of course, Tom, is technology and how right. that has changed. Uh, some years, you know, 20, 30 years ago, um, people would build bigger facilities. The teller line would be long. The drive-in windows would aco- accommodate <laughs> four, four good, or five yeah, lanes. Good point, yeah. And uh, on Fridays... You'd have a, to have a rope line to just to keep people in order, so that when they came in to cash their checks, yeah. that that they, it could be handled because everybody came in personally. They got their paycheck and they came in and handled it. Right. So Security Day was one you staffed up for because people got checks. Then that changed, and now in fact um, the physical facilities for banks are getting smaller. You don't need all that space for people come in because they're the checks automatically go to their right. account so nobody i don't even know if you can if you actually can get a social security check today i don't think you i don't even think you could if you wanted one but uh, i think you have to have an account so that has changed dramatically and then we're all uh-huh. having to adjust what technology can do for us and um but yeah, that's a, g- a great point. You're you're so right. They, they really are. Don't don't need the workforce. Don't need the space. Don't need the lines. Yeah, you're right. It, so, I so was talking to a banker the other day, and I said, "How many young people do you get in this branch a day?" He said, "One, maybe." What? Well, and well, well they, of course, there's there is a change, and it doesn't mean that we're not getting young people. They just don't come in. Right. Exactly. They don't come in. They 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 use handle, the web. They handle. They use the web. They 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 can, they can open their account by by that. They take pictures of their check. Uh, just very very different, and they're so much more astute than we are. And uh, in some t- cases, I hear of various products, and I'll ask a grandchild, "What is this?" And then they'll <laughs> tell me what they use it for. That's true. And, uh, right. And words like Venmo, a payment system. Is yes. now, uh, you know, they just say, I'll Venmo it to you. Right. And um, we have to adapt to that. <clears throat> talk, talk about the concept of community banking. I mean, wh- why is that important to potential borrowers? Well, of course, I have a bias. I w- I've always worked for a community bank, and, and I think a community bank uh, uh, offers, you know, a unique opportunity. And I take nothing away from the very large national banks, the, the you know, the largest five or ten in the country. They provide a great service. But I do think your community bank, one that's either only based in your town or is is based in a, a number of counties or towns around you, but where management is local and boards of directors are local or, or certainly in your state, uh, that I think uh, they have a better feeling of what happens. They're their children are playing with your softball team. Or they're, they, you know, they, they support 
your activities in the community they they, they know what's going on right. and, and they know if you know if if a certain industry is struggling right now because of something i, th I think they they can appreciate that and right. maybe adjust what they do to reflect that right. so i mean i I think it's very important. You know, uh, a big part of what we we focus on at the Florida SBDC is um, is helping clients gain access to capital. I mean, uh, accessing capital is so vital to business success and growth and expansion. How did you view your role in that process of helping your community grow by by providing that capital to local businesses? Well, we've always well, for the most part. Banks are, at least in our, my early years, we were used to lending on homes and office buildings and things where you have hard collateral. Now, that doesn't really start much in the way of a business, Tom. That helps provide the house, helps give you shelter or, and, and the like. But um, as we grew, we knew we needed to diversify and we needed to broaden our loan base, and we started to get more into business loans. But it is more difficult because often your collateral is the plan, the idea that your potential borrower has, and um, uh, you know we're we're not lending our own money; we're lending our shareholder, our depositors' money, and so we we also don't charge the same rates that uh, small loan companies would charge. So we're not generally looking to take a high risk. So we have to balance not taking a high risk with still working with local people, whether they, 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 they be in, in the laundry business, whether they be in the food business, right. or, 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 or the, you know, a variety of other local businesses and see how you can uh, put a deal together. And that's what right. it really takes, to know what they're doing and uh, to understand their business and to right. grow with them. Yeah, and I like your term, put the deal together. I, I like that. You well, know, they're not all the same. Right, that's right. Home loans generally are pretty much cookie cutter. Right. Uh, you know, I've said this about other folks that that, uh, that are in industries. You know, a lot of times when you're in an industry like banking or we talk about maybe sometimes attorneys, you know, you get kind of focused on on really, you know, certain aspects of that. And, there, and I always like it when I can deal with, with folks that are in banking and, and some lawyers that can make that leap over into business. So you really understand that part of business. And you know, you're, you really are one of those folks. You, you spent your whole career in business, but you also possess true great uh, business acumen and, and you have an entrepreneurial mindset. And you know, we've talked about that uh, for a number of years, but you know, I'll always remember years ago, you led an initiative uh, back when I was just a a small young man uh, back in town from no. from I had just come home from the University of Florida, but you led an initiative to have our the, at the time our local economic development council under the Chamber of Commerce to purchase a parcel of land that uh, that you developed into an industrial park. And I mean, this was really out of the box thinking at the time. Uh, you know, talk about that entrepreneurial endeavor and and how that all came about. I mean, that was a was a big turning point in our community. Well, you've got a very good memory yeah. because that was a long time ago <laughs> but um, one thing about community banking is all of them not just myself but many of the community bankers get involved in activities in the community and there it, back in the early 80s i guess it was the they decided they needed uh, uh, an industrial uh, a group that was promoting industry bringing industry here to diversify the community and a group was formed called the Go Team. And, and That's right. That was an I, well, that part I forgot. That was yeah. an acronym for Growth Opportunity. But it, it was very similar to what today the EDC is doing. And, and really, there's one system uh, is very similar to that. But we, the, the group of business people, got together and decided one of the concerns we had is that if we were able to attract a manufacturer here, we didn't have any place for him to go. There were no industrial parks at the time. The only thing we had was out by the airport, <coughs> and and that was uh, more limited. And so we really that was all we had, and it was decided that we needed to find a way to to try to help make that happen as a community effort. And um, actually, one Sunday evening, I got a call from a gentleman who was, um, I guess, 
head, had been head of the chamber and I was head of the GO team and, and uh, he indicated we had a unique opportunity to uh, buy a piece of property out by the, off Glades Cutoff, out by the, what was then became the PGA and the Reserve. And, uh, but they needed money to finance it and basically what I agreed to do was to try to get the five banks, local banks together, there were five at the time, and we'd each help fund a fifth of it. Because that was a lot of money in those days. Right. That, was, that was a big deal. Right. And as it turned out, we got it financed. It, as it turned out, just because it had to be done quickly, I believe we financed the project. But uh, everybody was willing to do it, but we just had to move quickly. And uh, so we had um, an industrial park, and we had one or two customers. But uh, our prospective lot buyers, but what was amazing about the community effort is the... the um, some of the lakes done for drainage came as a result of Phil being sold for 95. And so it was really right. every different, or, you know, the county commission was helping. Everybody was working together. But uh, uh, shortly after that, the developer of the PGA decided he wanted to buy that. And um, we were able to sell it at that time for what it was worth, but it was substantially more than what we paid for it. Right. And it created for a long time an endowment that helped fund economic development in the county wow but uh, wow yeah that's great story. And, yeah it, it is a great story and i'll always remember that and it really was forward thinking and 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 entrepreneurial in in every really sense of of the of the project i mean it was it well was, it, it it was we wouldn't have thought of it that way but it just was something that <laughs> needed to be done yeah. and it was we had a willing group of banks w willing to work together no one was trying to take credit right. but we were all willing to work together to fund something right that I mean, it wasn't against the regulations, but it was not something normally well, done. In, in basic entrepreneurship, what we teach is, uh, you know, you got to identify a problem and then, you know, develop the solution. And I think that's what the GO team kind of did. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, obvious uh, for obvious reasons, uh, you know, Mr. Brown was this year's recipient of the Entrepreneur of the Year Award. So, again, kind of back to you, Ann, just to, uh, you know, kind of – Talk to us a little bit about this program. I know other schools have kind of come to you and said, gosh, what do you guys do with this Entrepreneur of the Year program? Are schools still interested and talk to you about expanding this program? Well, our sister colleges in the state of Florida, there's 28 of us under the Florida College system. They certainly have talked to us. We have meetings twice a year, and there are several schools. They may not do it exactly the way we do. Uh, you know, everybody does it a little differently, right. and which is fine. Uh, certainly the University of Florida recognizes, University of Central Florida recognizes an entrepreneur uh, in their community that has made an impact. And so, yes, uh, we've had schools from the state of Washington, Maryland, uh, wow. Virginia, Ohio come down talk to us and meet with us for a couple of days about what we do how we do it and how we identify and now that mike is a recipient of the entrepreneur of the year he will now be part of that very select group of people who will now recommend other people because the other entrepreneurs are the ones that recommended that Mike be nominated. Right. I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> I, so this, yes. I thought I just yes. had a good relationship with Ann and yeah. she yeah. owed no. me a beer or something. Yeah. So, uh, now, my, there's work involved in this, Mr. Brown. You, yeah. Yes, you'll now, you'll now be assigned some tasks. Yes, uh, because it has been very interesting because, you know, you, you think you know everybody, you've lived here forever, and then one of our entrepreneurs will say, you know, there's this guy or this lady that does da-da-da-da, and right. they're so busy working that you may not know them, but they've got, you know, 72 right. employees, they're building this, they've expanded, they've moved, you know, and you're like, really? Right. You know? And so anyway, so that's how it all gets started. Nice. That's now, great. You know, Dr. Massey, uh, I always tell people anytime we speak and we talk about the president, I always tell folks we're, we're lucky at Indian River State College because we, we have a president who, who gets it. And I, in terms of economic development, in terms of business support, uh, you know, this the whole EDI and, and, you know, hosting the SBDC here, again, all comes uh, with Dr. Massey's uh, vision and support. And, you know, he talks about, I've heard him say many times that the entire campus is, is really a business incubator. Uh, this Entrepreneur of the Year event really speaks to that idea that the goals and objectives of entrepreneurship are campus-wide here at Indian River State College. Talk a little bit about your role in, in this event in creating that entrepreneurial awareness and awakening uh, across the, the research coast. And, and like you just said, 
you're doing this across the state and across the country. Yes. Well, and again, uh, Dr. Massey always challenges us to think like a businessman and to think entrepreneurial and not think in the educational towers that academia has a tendency to do. And so we take risk. Uh, we, uh, you know, nobody would think we would film this and create a movie uh, the, uh, the story of Mike Brown's life and others. Uh, that's not what we started out to do. You know, you had a cocktail reception, you'd honor somebody, you'd give them a plaque, thank you very much, and they go home. Uh, but every year we challenge ourselves, what can we do differently and how can we represent this and how can we highlight the business and the people that have been involved in the business for the entrepreneur that we're honoring that can influence our students, our faculty, our staff, and that we can do things differently because Dr. Massey allows us to fail. I mean, we may try something and it may not work. Okay, well, we'll just pick ourselves up and go and try a different way, do a different method. It isn't like, oh, come into my office, you're going to be fired. It's like, well, okay, that didn't work too well. Let's try again. Right. I, and I remind him of that philosophy all the time. That is something I do remind him of. That, that, yes. that, that, yeah. He does support, uh, you know, trying things and failing. So, yes. Yes, I, yes, yes. So, <clears throat> um, so uh, that's uh, why we're being recommended for next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You know, now you you brought up the 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 aspect of failure in entrepreneurship. But one of your favorite stories that I know you always tell about the entrepreneur of the year is the is the flip side of failure. And that's perseverance. Oh, uh, oh. Tell us about your favorite perseverance story. Well, this is my, is my favorite uh, story. Uh, we had an entrepreneur that we honored about 10, 12 years ago, and uh, he wanted to buy a large piece of property and he didn't have enough money so he read the wall street journal until he understood how to leverage and once he understood the concept of leveraging he went to started going out to buy to get the money to buy this big development that was for sale he went to one bank he went to five banks he went to 10 banks, and as Mr. Brown just told you, uh, it, at the time, there were not that many banks in the area, and there certainly were not the chases of the world that were here. We had local community banks. He went to 37, Whoa. let me count again, 37 different banks before somebody would say yes to him. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm pretty determined, and I'm pretty focused, but I have to tell you, after about the seventh one that told me no, I would think that my idea was probably not worth pursuing. And since I'm in the fundraising business, my goal used to be seven times you tell me no. Well, I have a new goal now, and it's now called 38. So you're going to hear from me a lot if you tell me no, because I'm just going to go until I hear yes. And when I spoke to his wife, I said, were you shocked? She said, the word no does not exist in my husband's vocabulary. His idea is somebody's going to understand that I am going to do this. And this is the same individual that said, why don't you hang my failures up on the wall? Because I have learned from every one that I have not been successful at, which has propelled me to be successful in a different venture in a different way. Yeah. And so that's my favorite story. Uh, what Persever a great story. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't wow. know there were 37 banks. <laughs> in the, in the, in the, he might have gone to a couple of them twice. Yeah. In, the, in the three counties or the 10 counties. Yeah, yeah. That's 30, 37 different banks before he got his funding. So, uh, you know, Mr. Brown, kind of, kind of, as we kind of close in on the end of the show here, talk to us a little, what is your philosophy of entrepreneurship? Kind of tell us what it all means to you. Well, um, I, I think one thing that I, I believe in trying to grow, I, I think if you are not growing in business, you're, you're probably falling backwards. So in order to accommodate that, that you probably need to get, sometimes you get creative and um, try new things. Um, we had a situation that in the early 90s, uh, we, we, we went public, and I had no idea. In order to fund some growth, we went public, and I had no idea whether anybody would buy stock in a community bank, and um, they did, and then we, we, we really, what, what was called a mutual uh, conversion, whereas we sold a little less than 50% of the stock, and then four years later, we sold the rest of it. But um, it was certainly experimental uh, for us, we had not done it before, 
um, but it did allow us to continue to grow and um, ultimately in the mid 2000s we, we did sell the company but we were at that point a three billion dollar bank in 40 some odd offices throughout the state and we couldn't have done that without going public and none of us had ever done that before none of our senior group had ever done that before and we sort of you know you, right. you, you've read you lo- talked to other people you learned and uh, and we did it right um you know you've um you you've worked an awful lot with us in our program you've served a, a, a number of times with us on our on our pioneer pitch events our shark tank like events i mean uh it, it's always great to have you participate you you really provide some some sound advice and and you're always uh you know very candid in a in a generous way with our young entrepreneurs and and pointing them in the right direction what is your advice to to young entrepreneurs who are kind of starting out and, and looking at, at launching uh, their ideas you know, it's interesting, um, and I think I've been with three of the Shark Tank groups, and so maybe have seen 12, three or four, 12 or so different uh, uh, presenters. I was not, I probably could only say one or two of those presentations I thought might really work, but Tom, I thought most of the presenters will be successful at some time. Right. I remember one gentleman who had... Um, a sp- was pr- proposing spa type things that were popular in right. California. I didn't think they'd work here at all or would it have much hope for him. But the man was so impressive. Right. He was uh, just graduating from uh, IRSC, but he was so thoughtful, he was so impressive that I have no doubt that he will be successful in some form. So that, I guess that ties to the perseverance thing. Um, and I don't know whether that particular business has been successful or not, but y- you see people who, who today are ahead of their years. In fact, the last one, Tom, I think there was a gentleman who was 20 years old or 21 yeah. years old. Yeah, we, actually and, a student in the School of uh, Business, yes, yes. right. And, and again, whether his particular idea at that time works, I don't know. But I'm convinced, though, that he will be successful at something. And he's that that's the type of person I'd love to have worked for me if I were to, to do it again. Right. Just because they they're so committed, they're thoughtful, and um, they they'll be successful because that you know they 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 think they 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 think broadly, they they, they think outside of the box as you say, but um, they also have they're tenacious, and right. all of them seem to accept suggestions from our group of judges. Also, they yeah. they they seem to be willing to say well you know i should have done that or i should i should have this in my presentation right. or my my cash flow should be a little different and uh, so they had a willingness to listen yeah and you know you bring up a, a great point about entrepreneurship that, that we've heard before but you bring up that that point about it's sometimes not always about about the horse it's more about the jockey so it's not always about the idea maybe it's really the the perseverance and the drive of 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 the of the person with the idea that that can really make something happen oh. if, even without it being the next greatest idea i i agree i th- i think it takes the the perseverance it, it takes somebody who's will has has an idea and may mold it and adjust it right. and do what it takes to uh, try to form it into a, a marketable product but uh it's the individual is behind it in, in most cases or team and also right so talk to us a little bit about this entrepreneur of the year award uh, uh you know kind of tell us uh, the process you went through and, and what did it all mean to you well uh, i was asked if i would do be entrepreneur of the year award and i was very very flattered because i really hold the college up as sort of the premier organization in the area so if they're going to say something nice about me i think it really meant a lot (laughs) and um, and it turned out to be a much bigger deal than i had any idea it would be because i thought it was sort of show up for dinner uh put a nice suit on and get a a plaque handed to you right and then go home as, as ann described it was it was far far more than that i mean it was really they made me feel good they did a lot of they, they did filming of 
people that I've been associated with in the past and some right. families, some people I've worked with with charitable organizations and things like that. So they put together a terrific video that uh, made me feel great. And um, then uh, a, a dinner, uh, I was uh, a couple of good friends that uh, sort of spoke on, on the cuff right. about me. And um, great dinner, uh, a great evening. and. A good number of the prior recipients of the award were there that night. So, you know, I was with some pretty uh, strong folks yeah. that had, had been successful long before I had. Yeah. And uh, so it was really beyond my expectations. And it was yeah. uh, uh, the college uh, just really does do it right. Yeah, you know, Dr. I'm glad, I, I'm glad it wasn't the first year where I got the plaque <laughs> and set up. <laughs> <laughs> a plaque, a plaque, a burger, right. and sent home. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. yeah, right. Well, you know, uh, Doctor Massey always says, you know, at the at the event, uh, he says this is is the highest award um, handed out by the college. I mean, and talk. Well, I think, quite frankly, for my sake, I look at it as probably the highest award you can get <laughs> yeah. in the Treasure Coast. So right. I felt for business. I mean, right. obviously, there's scientists, there's people that do other things, but for for business, I, it was very. It made me feel very good. Yeah, to speak to that, Ann, I mean, it really is the most prestigious award the college hands out. Absolutely, Uh, and this may sound trivial, but uh, we schedule Dr. Massey's entire calendar around this event. I mean, uh, it is planned at least 18 months in in advance, even if we don't have a recipient, because he is not going to miss it. The only time he has missed it is when he was in the hospital. Uh, uh, and, you know, I mean, he will go through heaven and hell to make sure uh, that this is the number one priority. And he tells everybody on campus because he feels that right. committed to recognize the Entrepreneur of the Year, which recognizes economic development, which recognizes employment, which recognizes the workforce, which recognizes job and the economy and the money that feeds banks, that feeds restaurants. And it's all it's all right. connected. And um He wants to praise those entrepreneurs that have the guts and perseverance to take the risk, to do what they do, to make this community the fabulous place that it is that we all call home, that we love so very, very much. And there aren't a lot of things that recognize an entrepreneur the way we try to do it. And we take great pride and pleasure in honoring a gentleman like Mike Brown for all that he has given. It really could have taken us really a week because Mike has done so much in giving back to this community. I don't think that there's a nonprofit out there that Mike and Mimi Brown and Harbor Community and Harbor Federal Banks have not supported. And they have been there every step of the way. If they needed a helping hand or they needed a volunteer, uh, Mike and Mimi Brown were there, Harbor Harbor Community and Harbor right. Federal. Well, that's a good point, too, and, and I certainly have a, that same relationship. I uh, My first job back in town was as the uh, original uh, Main Street manager, and, of course, Mr. Brown uh, and Harbor uh, Federal were certainly sh- huge supporters of what we did at um, – at Main Street and, and the first supporters when we began the process to to renovate the Sunrise Theater building, mm-hmm. Mr. Brown was right there with absolutely. me. Uh, and I'm sure there were plenty of people that called me absolutely crazy on that day, as they still continue to do call <laughs> me crazy on some of my other ideas. You, but you were right on that time. The theater <laughs> has been huge. Yeah. But yeah. You, you know, and if I may, about the the value of the entrepreneurship, Not, not I'm not talking about me getting it, but for the most part, the people – have that have gotten it have made something or provide a service and what they they are most of them are ones who have helped diversify the economy correct for the long time we were an ag and tourist community and now we're bringing businesses people that make boats people that that uh, develop real estate and, and a variety of other things that uh, have really broadened this economy and i think are going to help and grow a long time so mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think the college has, has fostered that. And one thing Dr. Massey, I, I've heard say over the many years that I've known him, is that if they bring in an industry that needs a skill set, the college will train them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's and, exactly. And, and that's huge when you're trying to recruit a company to come here. That's right. right. Well, uh, listen, uh, Mr. Brown, uh, again, th- thank. I want to thank you. I want to take just a, a couple of seconds here and thank you for all the business advice. Uh, that you've given me through the years. We've worked together on a number of projects, again, starting back in 1988 uh, with what we did at Main Street. And 
And I, I want to thank you for all the loans you gave me over the years uh, <laughs> while I was back? in business. Did you pay him back? I'm, I'm pretty sure I paid I all those back. Did I? Yeah, I, I think I'm, I think you'd let me know if I still owed you anything. <laughs> I, I would tell you. <laughs> you. You've been good, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. But but He's seriously, got some papers in his wallet. Yeah. Uh, seriously, I do. I do. I do want to thank you for the mentoring and the support you and 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 your organizations, Harbor Federal, Harbor Community. Uh, you know, currently Center State, you, as you where you serve as a board member for Center State. Uh, you know all the the support you gave me and, and my business and, and my family uh, through the years. I I do not believe um, I could have had a better uh, banker or supporter uh, through my years in business. And and of course a, a big congratulations on a on a, a an award well deserved. Amen. Thank you very much, Tom. So, of course, I, I have known Tom since high school or maybe before. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think so. Yes, I, I I think you might have known me. Yes, you. I might have been in trouble a couple of times at your, <laughs> your I was going to say, give us some dirt. <laughs> Come on, Mike. <laughs> he could be, he could probably give us plenty of dirt. And and Ann, again, I I just can't say enough about what the foundation does to support us and in the SBDC and and support all the business activities and support uh, the resource programs and the trainings that we do in the Brown Center uh, on main campus. So my pleasure. It is indeed a pleasure. Okay. Well, we appreciate that and so with that again i want to remind everyone uh next week is national small business week and we've got the seventh annual entrepreneurship and small business conference uh coming to you from main campus uh, a lot of it taking place right there in the brown center for innovation and entrepreneurship uh and uh we appreciate mr brown's commitment to to all that we do there too so so go to that visit that irscbiz.com site uh, check out the events calendar and uh, click on that, and you can uh, see all the information about the upcoming conference and allow you to register for the conference. Again, going to be a big day uh, on entrepreneurship and small business right there on main campus. Uh, and that'll do us. Again, thank you, Mr. Brown, for taking time out this evening to come join us. Thank you, Tom. And by the way, sometime you got to start calling me Mike. Okay. All so, right, Mike, tonight. Yeah, we'll tonight, do it tonight. To Mike. Fir first. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, thank you Ann. My pleasure. And with that, we'll bring to close another segment of Startup Talk from the Dan K. Richardson Entrepreneurship Development Institute uh, right here at Indian River State College. And uh, with that, uh, we'll bring to close uh, this segment, and we'll talk to you next Thursday on Startup Talk. You've been listening to Startup Talk now in its fifth year. Really? Yeah, five years. Uh, <laughs> it seems like yesterday, right? Oh, actually, it was yesterday. Oh. Is WPSL Port St. Lucie. Worldwide, WPSL and WSTU on Alexa and Google Home. <laughs>